Hello class! So in this lesson what we're going to be talking about is modeling with quadratic functions. This is where it gets real, where we get real life data points and then find a quadratic equation that would fit that data. So let's do just a quick review of what we've been uh, doing, what we've been learning. We've learned vertex form, we've learned intercept form, we've learned standard form. All very useful, different um, forms that describe a quadratic equation. Now, a key concept is this. Any three points describes a unique parabola. Now, there, we're going to see in some cases, there are uh, special cases where only two points are needed, but typically three points, three, uh, any three points describes a single unique parabola. You know, just like two points are needed for lines, three points are needed for parabolas, quadratics. So, as an overview, the, the basic concept is this. We take the points, and according to the, the data points that we have, we're going to use one of the three different forms. Uh, we'll, we'll choose the best form based upon the data that we have. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. So, you know, if, if we think we want to use standard form, we need to figure out the A, the B, the C. If we think vertex form is the best form to use, we need to find the A, the H, the K. And if we think that intercept form is the best form to use, we need to find the A, the P, and the Q. So we, we set up some equations as a way of finding those three unknown coefficients. So here's the example. Write an equation of a parabola with vertex 1, 13 and point negative 2, 5. And we see this keyword vertex and that should make us think, hmm, vertex form would make a lot of sense to use. So what we're going to do is we take the vertex information and we plug that into the equation, that into our h, or sorry, my h and my k right there. And so then we're left with figuring out the A value after that. It's, vertex form is so convenient in that sense. It's so easy to plug it in. So the next step, we uh, look for our value of A. And how do we do that? We had this other information, this other point. We want to then plug that information into the X and into the Y of our equation. And now we're left with a single variable, and we can solve that you know, very easily. We find that a is equal to 8, 8, negative 8 ninths. We're not done yet. Don't box that as the answer. The final step is to actually write the equation. It's actually very tempting to stop once you think you found, solved for a, but actually we want to write this equation at the very end. Uh, plugging a into this, this is our equation for the quadratic in vertex form. Here's another example. Given points 4, 0, 2, 9, 20, 0, do the same thing. Write uh, equation of a parabola. So as you look at these, you think, hmm, well, these are special points. Whenever you see a 0, you know, in, in the coordinate, um, that's a special point. And these are x-intercepts. And so that makes us think, hmm, x-intercepts, intercept form, this is going to be the best form to use. So we um, write out our standard, or kind of the, the intercept form of the equation. We take our intercepts that we are given here, and then we just kind of plug that into the equation. So then, again, all we need to do is find the unknown a. We take the same idea where we're also given this third point of information. We take that third point and plug it into our x and y's. In this case, there are two x's to plug into, so we plug the 2 into both of these x's, and then we plug the 9 in there, and we, again, we solve for a. Again, we're not done. We write the equation. This is our equation for the parabola. Okay, at this point, I'm going to kind of take a little aside here. Um, some of your homework is going to talk about this concept of average rate of change for a function. So let's just review this. We've actually talked about this before. So if I have some function f of x, and if I'm asked to find the average rate of change of this function, and it could be a curvy function here, what is the average rate of change from a to b? 
Well, actually what it is, it's a line. We draw a line from f of a to f of b, and we calculate the slope of that line. That is our average rate of change. So here's our slope equation, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Again, just the slope. Okay, uh, back to this uh, kind of modeling example. Now, in this case, uh, this is the final example. Um, we have three points, and in this case, there's really no interesting point that we're given. They're not x-intercepts, they're not uh, vertexes, so in this case, it's kind of a bummer. So we end up using standard form, and this is our standard form, uh, and we need to find the A, the B, and the C. So what we do is the following. We have three points, so for each of these points, we're going to plug in x and y. So this is our first point, negative 5, 10. So I'm going to plug in my negative 5 and negative 10 into the equation. Okay. So I get equation 1 from that. I do the same with the next point, point 2. So, oops, negative 1, negative 2. Plug this in here, negative 1, negative 2. I get equation 2. Do that one more time, where I get my points uh, 0 and 5, 0 comma 5, plug that into my x and y, I get equation 3. Now, yeah, actually, I, I was kind of lying earlier. This is a special point. This is my y-intercept. But we don't have any special form uh, other than standard form that, that can handle it. So, um it does end up being pretty nice. C is equal to 5. That's, that's kind of an easy thing. But I want to show how, in general, this process of taking three random points, plugging it into my x and y's, will always, gives us, will always give us three equations of three variables. So then the next step is to solve that 3 by 3 system. You'll be able to find your A, B, and your C. So I didn't show all the work in this case, but we do find that A is 1, B is 4, C is 5, and again, we're not done. We plug that in and write our equation. Okay, but how do we even know if the data that we're given um, is a line or if it's a quadratic or what is it? Does it even fit a quadratic model at all? So actually, in this part, I want to discuss how we can tell if data fits a quadratic. Um, so first method is just to plot the points. And then you observe it and you kind of make a judgment on it. In the first case, over here on the left, it does not look like a parabola. In fact, it looks kind of linear. So we would use a linear model for this estimate of data points. In this middle case, we, we kind of clearly see a parabola shape, and so in this case, we would say, yeah, it's a quadratic. But in this final case over here, it's not clear. We don't know. Does it keep going back up or something like that? It actually seems like the data keeps getting lower and lower and lower. So in this case, we don't call it a quadratic. Right now, we're just going to say we don't know yet. We'll find out later. There's actually another method that we can use to identify um, whether the data fits a quadratic. Um, this is called common differences. And this is only useful when the x values are evenly spaced. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here's a set of data points. I have my x values. I have my associated f of x values. And if you notice, every single x value is separated evenly by a, a value of 2. Plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, all the way across. When we evaluate the f of x and do the differences there, you know, 15 minus 10, 20 minus 15, 35 minus 30, we find that there's a common difference of 5. When that's true, when we have a common difference in my x and a common difference in my y, we can say that it's a linear function because the, what we say, the first differences are all the same. Now let's look at another set of data. In this case, the, the x values, again, are evenly spaced, um, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, all the way. But when we do our first differences, definitely not common. So by that, we know it is not a linear function. But if we did the differences one more time, 
So we took, you know, 51 minus 33, 64 minus, 69 minus 51. We find that the common differences are all the same. In this case, it's not the first difference, but it's the second difference. And so this is the, the rule. When the second difference is all the same, it is a quadratic equation. And um, actually, this extends. When the third differences are all the same, it's cubic, and so on and so forth. And even if it weren't all the same, if it were like 18, 19, 17, 18, it would be, it would tell us that it's very close to being a quadratic, just like this is close to being a quadratic. It's not, you know, in real life, data points don't fall exactly on the, the a perfect parabola, so that if the second differences were close to being all the same, we would say a quadratic model probably fits the data very well. Okay? So that's the end of the lesson for today. Have a good day, everybody.